Hello, how are you doing? You came to this video because you want to know what it's like to work at Applebee's and how much money you can possibly make by working there. <laughs> Let me tell you. Well, first off, I just recently quit. <laughs> yeah, I did. I recently took put in my two weeks because I found a someplace else. Uh, but first, let's talk about Applebee's. What is Applebee's? Mainly, it's usually a step above Denny's and IHOP, and then you got Applebee's. No disrespect to people who work at Denny's and IHOP. I'm just saying, for some reason, on a tier list, Applebee's is usually above there. What is Applebee's known for? Applebee's known for its cheap appetizers and cheap drinks. That's why it has two different happy hours, which are actually two three-hour blocks. It's not even like a happy hour is happy hours. And it's six hours where there's basically a whole shift of happiness for some reason. Let's talk about it. Applebee's. There's two types of Applebee's, at least that I know of. There's one is the one that is connected to a mall, uh, usually by a movie theater, and the other one is a standalone restaurant, which is by itself, with it's surrounded by a parking lot. What's the difference other than its location? Usually, the standalone closes an hour later than the one that's connected to the mall. Mainly, I believe because the mall has sort of like, hey, we don't want drunk people past one in the morning you know get them out of here by midnight because usually that's when the movies all the movies end so get them all out at the same time just get them out of here um i just want to let you know i currently i work at a applebee's in california so there's a different wa minimum wage when it comes to other things i've seen other people's videos as servers where their minimum wage is like two dollars which is crazy but California is $15, but there is a big difference. One is that it's way more expensive to live in California. Rent is high. Gas is high. Food cost is high. Everything is high. A lot of people are high. So those are usually a lot of people that come in, by the way, um, because they're high and they got the munchies and they want to get wasted. They maybe want to get crossed by, you know, drinking some more. You can tell. You can tell those types of people because you can smell them and they don't care i just come in all dank and just like yeah yeah give me those give me that give me this give me those, blah, 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 you know it's crazy sometimes next is what everyone comes here for how much do you make so on average per paycheck i usually work four days a week four to five depending on how busy it is and my shifts usually range from four to almost eight hours it really depends on which section you put on uh, for my restaurant, if you're in a section 5 or a 2, you're usually a closing section. You're usually there the longest. So, keep that in mind. Um, so, my paycheck usually averages around 500 every two weeks. And then I make, obviously, 1000 a month just on paycheck alone. Tip average. Uh, for those 4 to 5 days I work, I usually average around $100 in tips. Now, that might sound like a lot to you, but for me, I'm usually on the bottom rung of who makes the most tips at my store. I, I, I make, I make, I usually make the least, <laughs> but it's $100. Most of that is not my fault. I do get a lot of people that don't tip, and I treat every guest the same. I don't, you know, I don't sugarcoat things. I keep it real. I'll get you your food, your drinks, everything as quickly as possible, and I'll make sure that you get everything you need. If there's any problems, I try to correct it as quickly as possible. I'm not the type of server that just, you know, gets your stuff and then I start talking to my friends because, you know, I can. No, I'm usually in my section a lot longer than most others. My only real problem is, one, is my face. I usually have like a resting bitch face. And two, I'm not overly, oh, hey, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? Blah, blah, blah. I don't really usually ask a lot of questions that aren't related to work. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm by the books, basically. So keep that in mind. That's usually why I'm usually on the bottom rung of making tips. But also, because it's Applebee's, there are a lot of people that are kind of a little stingy on their page, on their wallets. So that's one of the main reasons why they come in is because their wallets ain't exactly thick. And we got happy hour, which is half hour, half hour for uh, appetizers. I can get a full off in like less than $20. So, yeah, keep that in mind. 
but I do make decent, uh, you know, decent tips. So on average, uh, every week I make about $500 a week, multiply that by four, that's $2,000 on top of my paycheck. So I average around $3,000 a month, give or take. Like I said, it just depends on how busy things in is. And I do sometimes make more. I sometimes make less. It all just depends. But I'm just doing this as an average. I make about, on average, $3,000 a month. And you also got to keep in mind, wow, that's a lot of money. Like I said, I live in California. And rent is high. Gas is high. Food is high. Everybody's high. Um, so just keep that in mind. Now let's talk about the work environment. Working at Applebee's is not any all that different than working at any other restaurant. It's just every other restaurant has a different niche, a different theme, a different uh, kind of food they're serving. So Applebee's serves pretty much like anything. They serve a lot of everything, basically. Wings, quesadillas, mozzarella sticks, pasta, steak, salads, soup. Pretty much everything, you know, burgers, sandwiches. They, they, they try to sell everything that they can that will just draw everybody in. It's like, it's like, it's like an all, all-in-one all shop, just like a Denny's uh, or whatever. So that's the type it is, uh, work environment is. Uh, but let's move on to, you know, the back-of-the-house type things. Usually, my managers are pretty cool. My coworkers are pretty cool. And the back of the house is pretty cool. So I have no real issues with the place itself. And I will get into my reasons why I left at the end. So just stay tuned for that. Um, I, for I don't know if this is at every Applebee's, but the two Applebee's that I've ever been to, they have elevated platforms. And what I mean is when you walk into an Applebee's from the front door or whatever, you're in a level and then you're usually on level with the bar. So the bar, the entrance, and the back of the house kitchen is usually on the same level. But for some reason, everybody else that dines in that's not dining in at the bar, their tables are in an elevated platform for some reason. I don't understand why. So it does kind of, at least for me, it saps my energy having to keep walking up and down a ramp for no apparent reason. I don't know why they do this. It's just extra work that I got to do. And then coming down the ramp for some reason is there's a, a ramp that's right in front of the exit door for pulling coming out with food and stuff so you're gonna have to like there, there could be crashes that happen and that specific ramp i don't know why they designed it that way it's kind of stupid but it's just something i like to you know let you know it's like they have elevated platforms for some reason or steps for some reason i don't understand why most restaurants have everything on the same level but for some reason, Applebee's does that. At least the two that I've been to. Let's talk about rushes. One of the main things most servers wor worried about is like how bad do the rushes get? It can get pretty bad. Applebee's has four different kind of rushes. You got your two normal ones, which is a lunch and a dinner rush. But then you got the two three-hour blocks for happy hours. So it's lunch rush, happy hour number one rush, dinner rush, and then happy hour number two rush. Four rushes that can come in at any any time between those blocks and just mess everything up. You think you got everything down. You think you got everything restocked. You think you got everything, you know, everyone taken care of. And then, boom, a whole bunch of people can just show up at any t given time. And that could just mess up everything. It, it, it gets crazy sometimes. On top of that, um, man, I'm losing my train of thought in here. Uh, anyways, uh, we'll move on from that. So rushes, it can happen. It does happen. It will happen. Just be prepared for that. Types of guests. It really depends on your location, all right? If you're in a nice, fancy location, you're obviously going to get nice, fancy guests. But there is something, a caveat to that. Most of these fancy guests, they deserve a top-tier service. On the other hand, my location it's kind of not in a very nice location. It kind of gets sketchy a little times. There are some homeless and, you know, drug users that do walk around a bit, sometimes in the mall too. You have to deal with young kids or, you know, they can be a little stupid sometimes. 
um, and people who are under influences already coming in. So we get that a lot. And um, we do get a lot of walkouts. We do get a lot of dying and dashes. We do get a lot of problems. We do get a lot of really high or drunk people that come in. And then you really basically you got to walk on eggshells and handle them delicately because you don't want them to go all freaking out on you. And, you know, that's just undue stress on for me, which will lead on to the end section as to why I left. Um, Let's talk about hours. I think I mentioned it before. Uh, Applebee's usually all opens at 11. The two the standalone location closes at one. Usually the ones with that's connected to something closes at 12. So just keep that in mind. It is a very long opened restaurant. Um, uh, so I guess that leads on to why I'm leaving. I'm leaving for a few reasons. Number one is the hours of operation. It closes really late. I leave really late. I don't really like that. I want to find, I want to work at a restaurant where it closes at a nice, decent time, maybe 10, where I can actually hang out with friends after rather than, hey, anybody's still awake? And they're like, oh, no, we just finished. We're getting heading home. And I'm like, well, shit, I got nothing to do, right? So that's number reason is hours operation. Second reason is I said earlier the types of guests that come in. Not every Applebee's has the same type of guests, but the, the current one that I work in, I always have, I have good guests, yes. Good guests come in all the time, but I also have a lot of bad guests. And that really, it gives me un, uh, unnecessary um, stress. And then I have to worry about something that I really shouldn't have to worry about. If I'm taking an order with this guest, I don't want to have to keep looking to my side to make sure, you know, they're not trying to, you know, dine and dash or whatever. Or I have to let a manager know, hey, I have a feeling that that table over there might dine and dash. So you might want to keep an eye on them. I don't want to have to worry about that. That's, that's something that I don't want to have to do. And then I also have guests where I have to really tippy toe how I handle them because they might, you know, they might have had just a bad day or whatever, but they're under a influence or they want to get drunk. And then we've been coming out with these stupid promotions, which lead me to number three, these like an all you can eat boneless wings where they're not really coming in to eat. They're just coming in to do a TikTok challenge and they're like constantly ordering stuff and they're just bothering me. Like I'm having to do extra stuff just so they can film something on their TikTok. Like that's not the reason you come in. You come in to eat, not to, you know, be viral or whatever. And then we have these dollaritas that going on. Where people expect to be like, I got five dollars, give me five dollar readers right now, and they're like, no, we can't do that. You can only do it one at a time, and then they're just starting giving me attitude uh, because of the pushback that I give. It's like, I can only give you one at a time. Oh, really? And then after three, I gotta let a manager check on you. Like, why would you? Why would you do that? It's like, well, it's just because you know they want to make sure that you're good. You can still drink, and like, of course I can still drink. So having to do these unnecessary steps where it could just ruin the whole vibe and I'm not going to get any tip from it. And I also got to check ID and then that's fine for the people that have the IDs. But I've, I've been having a lot of people that have, they don't have their, they don't bring their ID and then they just start pulling out their phone and like, here, here's a picture of my ID. And I'm like, I can't, I can't do that. I have to have a physical copy. And then they start giving me attitude. I've had multiple customers, guests be like, let me speak to your manager. And the manager's like, yeah, you know, I can't take a picture. I have to have a physical ID. And then that just ruins the vibe. And then that just ruins the tip for me. It's like, these are undue things where it's like, I can't get good tips because I have to follow these processes. These people want to get drunk. But we're going to be like, yeah, but we're going to stop you. And then, you know, it just, it's just undue things that I have, undue processes that I don't need to have to do. And then it just ruins the whole experience. And then I have to worry about extra stuff. And then that just like mentally it can can corrupt me. And then like it just it just starts a whole domino effect where like it starts affecting other guests because now I have to make sure that this guest is like okay and like oh man uh, they can't have multiple drinks and they're trying to get drunk and then this guest so so needless to say. There's a lot of stuff that I have to do that's extra that I really shouldn't have to do. I want to make sure that every guest is happy, but they're not happy if I have to keep like sort of pulling them back, pulling their reins back. It's like, hey, 
you can't enjoy it that much, you know what I'm saying? So, there, there's that. It, it just, sometimes it just can suck. And then I said, like, oh, we've, there's always oh, somebody that walks out, like, every week, one of my servers has a walkout, like, guaranteed. And it's like, why? Why do we have to deal with this, you know? It's stupid. So, there's nothing wrong with the management. The manager's fine. Like, every restaurant is not the same, but at least for mine, management is cool. My coworkers are cool. The back of the house is cool. It's just the overall everything else I don't like. Hours of operation. The kind of people that I have to deal with. The multiple rushes that, like, people are coming in here cheap. They're going to leave cheap. They're not going to leave you big-ass tips, so... I want to work somewhere else where I don't have to rely on these gimmicks and these sort of like, you know, TikTok type things where they're just coming in so they can go viral. They're not coming in to enjoy the experience. They're not coming in to get my service. They're just coming in for one specific goal, laugh about it and leave. So it is what it is. But that's one of the main reasons why I left. It could be sound stupid to you, like just suck it up. But like I could work somewhere else better and make more money why would i want to work here and stress every day and worry about something i shouldn't have to worry about when i can go somewhere else and i don't have to worry about those things all i have to worry about is making sure that you are taken care of and then everything you've ordered is coming out correct and delicious Mwah. well yeah that's it i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope it was informative working at an applebee's if you Applebee's usually is pretty easy to hire. There is always there's a constant turnaround. That's a bad thing, by the way. If they're constantly hiring, that means most people that apply, they realize what it's like working here and like, nah, I don't think it's for me. I've gone through so many different people. It's crazy how many people have new people. You're like, oh, hey, you know, and then you forget their name because they never show up again. It's like so if you're a strong server and that doesn't really bother you, work there. They're always hiring, and you can make good money, but like I said, if that's not for you, and you know, you want to not have to worry about things, and you want to just have, enjoy your shift, and then that the people that you're serving knows that you're enjoying serving them, then that can boost your tips. Who knows? But yeah, that's the video.